Friday is our last show before our annual two week summer break. So after the holiday, we'll be back on Monday, July 15th, fresh and ready to go. This episode of Marijuana Today Daily is brought to you by our friends over at Ease.com, California's top one-stop website for legal marijuana delivery, as well as an option for the same for folks living in the Portland, Oregon area. And of course, for those of us living outside those two places, there's EaseWellness.com, where you can get professionally curated, hemp-derived CBD products via the mail in 44 U.S. states. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Wednesday, June 26th, 2019, and you're tuned in to episode 751 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. David Downs over at Leafly grabs today's top spot with an in-depth look at a just-passed adult use legalization bill in Illinois signed into law yesterday by Governor J.B. Pritzker. As David nicely points out, the country's first marijuana legalization law, which made medical marijuana legal in California back in 1996, was short enough to fit on a postcard, while Illinois' new adult use legalization is 600 pages long. So it's especially helpful that David took this deep dive in. Legalization will go into effect in Illinois on January 1st of next year and will make it legal for adults 21 years of age and up to buy and possess 30 grams of flour, 5 grams of concentrates, and edibles with a max of 500 milligrams of THC. Only medical patients will be able to grow cannabis at home, while retail customers will pay a 10% tax on flour, 20% tax on edibles, and 25% on concentrates. There are a bunch of fantastic social equity provisions in the new bill, including a program that will set aside a quarter of all marijuana tax revenue to be given back as grants for community improvement and investment projects. Open this one up, even if you don't do business in Illinois. As always, we have all the news we cover linked to on our website at mjtodaydaily.com. Oklahoma has been one of the more interesting unfolding storylines in legal cannabis as it's jumped wholeheartedly into medical marijuana, rolling out a system marked by almost no barriers to entry for businesses and rather unrestricted requirements for becoming patients. Tulsa World is reporting that this perfect storm of easy access has resulted in Oklahoma already becoming one of the nation's top medical marijuana states when measured by the percentage of its population signed up as registered patients. As of June 24th, according to the Oklahoma Medical Marijuana Authority, around 3.5% of the citizens of Oklahoma were registered medical cannabis patients. That's 140,000 people out of just under 4 million total Oklahomans. California ranks somewhere closer to 3% of its population, and it's had legal medical marijuana for more than 20 years now. This one continues to be interesting. Today's final top story brings us over to Massachusetts, where starting on July 1st, people who apply to become medical marijuana patients will be able to buy a two-week supply of medical cannabis while they wait for their registration application to be processed by the state. As it stands now, when you first become a patient in Massachusetts, you have to wait weeks while your application is processed before being able to shop at a medical dispensary. Those weeks of waiting can feel very long if you're sick and in need of relief. So under the new system, new medical marijuana patients will be free to buy two and a half ounces of cannabis just after submitting their application. This is a great policy that I hope other medical states adopt. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz on in headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, Ease.com, California's top one-stop website for legal marijuana delivery, as well as an option for the same for folks living in the Portland, Oregon area. There are still five more days left in June's Pride Month, which Ease is helping to celebrate by donating 5% of its proceeds for the month to support LGBTQ plus equality. Swing over to Ease.com today, spelled E-A-Z-E, and check out all the different legal cannabis products up for order, all of which land at your doorstep within an hour of hitting that submit button, assuming you're in a part of California or Oregon where Ease is active and that it's during legal delivery hours. 
Find out just how easy Ease makes legal marijuana delivery over at Ease.com or EaseWellness.com. If you live outside California and Oregon and need hemp-derived CBD products via the mail, that service delivers to 44 U.S. states, so the chances are good that you're in one of them. Thanks, everyone at Ease, for supporting our show. All right, time for the Blitz. We jump back to Massachusetts for a headline as that state's Clark University, located in Worcester, just announced that it is offering a graduate certificate in marijuana regulatory affairs. The program is geared towards people who want to work in legal cannabis regulation and will launch with three seven-week online courses to complete. The University of Maryland School of Pharmacy also just announced that it is offering a new marijuana-themed graduate program, this one a two-year Master's of Science degree in medical cannabis science and therapeutics. This one sounds pretty serious. The new program will start up at the end of August with applications being accepted through August 15th. Open up Mary Jane for more on this and for a link to the application. Legal marijuana products like vaporizer cartridges in California will be required to be printed with a new warning icon starting next year. The new warning mark has the letters CA below a triangle filled with a marijuana leaf and an exclamation point. I think it means California marijuana is awesome or something like that. (laughs) Pop over to Bart Shaman's story for more on this and to see the graphic yourself. The National Sheriff's Association approved a resolution calling for marijuana to be rescheduled to Schedule 2 by the federal government, while also saying that it opposes legalization. Why do we care what police think about legalization? They've been wrong about it the entire time, leap notwithstanding. Kudos, though, I guess, to the sheriffs for not being as regressive as they could be. The Canalog blog picked up on a proposed bill in California that would allow marijuana business license holders to freely exchange product samples. Right now in California, companies that produce marijuana products can't give out free samples to dispensary owners and workers to try to entice them to buy their products, as is done in just about every single consumer goods industry. Senate Bill 475 would fix that. Pop over if you want to give this one a read. Illicit marijuana market dealers and producers in Canada have adopted the technique of mimicking legal marijuana products that are then sold online on websites claiming to be licensed and legit. Given that the fake products can include vaporizer cartridges, which can come from dodgy, untested manufacturers, the counterfeit trade represents a potential health problem that could negatively impact the industry as a whole on top of the consumers that would be harmed. And finally for today, Maggie Cowie over at Marijuana Business Daily has an insightful story up around their latest edition of Chart of the Week. The U.S. Treasury's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, or FinCEN, recently released some numbers that seem to show a rise in the number of financial institutions working with state legal marijuana businesses. But as Maggie's story suggests, the data might not be that conclusive. The numbers just released from FinCEN are based on so-called suspicious activities report filings, which are generated by banks whenever they come across accounts suspected to be marijuana related. It does not always mean that the accounts are actually open and active, as banks are free to close accounts anytime they want. Tyler Byerlean of Arizona-based cannabis technology firm Hyper estimates that there are really only around 40 or so truly cannabis-friendly banks and financial institutions in the country, far fewer than the 600-plus shown in the FinCEN numbers. Read this story. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again tomorrow morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. What do you get when you cross a rabbit and a frog? A bunny ribbit. <laughs> Thanks to our sponsor Ease and to our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the illustrious ranks of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says become a patron. I'm your host, Shay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in and starting your day with marijuana today. Today.
One take, Shay. One take.